Hey guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs and thank you so much for watching this video. Today I've got a very exciting Photoshop tutorial to you guys. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually worked with this program, I've kind of been working on more of the motion side. Uh, however, I've actually worked on two of them that look quite good, had overall effect, and it was a glossy orb. Uh, if I take a look over at my Facebook page, uh, I released this uh, a few days ago, August 21st, about well, just under a week ago, and this orb is something that, well, first of all, we're going to be creating today. And you see how the reflections and kind of give the studio look um, and the whole scene and everything about it. Uh, gives it an overall nice effect. A few people wanted the tool. Uh, so here it is. Uh, so I think without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, we're in Photoshop. Obviously, mine is 1920 by 1080. Uh, I'll go file new. Uh, 1920, 1080, and a background color is white. Uh, bearing in mind, these, uh, this size is rather large. Uh, so should you be creating something, everything may be downgraded depending on your um, your whole canvas size. Uh, so just first of all, unlock that layer by double clicking, and we'll go ahead and an eclipse. Uh, we'll make the color black for now on the white background. You know, see it, and drag it out. Hold Shift, keep it in proportion. Uh, this is going to be the back sphere, so make it quite large. This is going to be the the total outer radius. Uh, so that looks good. Um, we we'll then duplicate that layer by clicking Control J and then hide it and on the first one we're going to go back and we're going to go and add a bevel and emboss uh, in a bevel smooth everything's fine uh, put the depth up to maximum possible 1000 I believe that is and then just increase the size to something like so whatever, whatever looks good that's okay and then on this layer we'll untick it again and we'll go Control J or control T rather, not duplicate, my bad. Uh, shift and Alt, and we'll drag it down uh, to a nice size, something like so. Uh, you see how, if you look in the top left, it goes white and then it goes to a black. Um, you want them to be kind of even, even size, uh, so that will be okay. And I click OK, and so you see the white and the black's roughly even. And that's going to be the outer shade, and that's going to be like the silvery gloss that you've just seen uh, on the bevel. So it's going to be uh, this outer ring here, and the thing we just made that we just uh, viewed uh, is going to be this uh, the, the blue. So going back, now uh, you can see uh, we'll quickly add a gradient overlay and style radial, and we'll quickly get uh, the whole blue look. So we can kind of differentiate them at ease. Uh, get the right kind of shade of blue here. Maybe I just want this a little bit darker, like so. There we go. That's looking good. And uh, maybe change the angle to zero just to increase it a little bit. Uh, maybe the scale, like so. There we go. Uh, so you see, it's kind of coming together. Uh, there you've got the you've got the inner edge. Well, we're going to edit this further in the bevel and boss settings. Uh, first, you're going to add a color overlay. I'm going to change the color to white. Yeah, like so. Uh, we'll add an outer glow so you can differentiate it from from the from the background. Maybe just increase the size a bit. Add a drop shadow as well. Uh, lower the distance to zero and the size. Maybe just a little bit. Maybe I'd fact have the distance about two or something. Lower the opacity to about fifty. And there we go. Now under bevel and emboss, uh, obviously you've got that you can change. Uh, the angle, uh, the altitude, and the gloss contour to really get different uh, effects. Uh, and the gloss contour, I usually like to use this two bumps one. Uh, it gives a nice, as you see, it gives a really nice effect. A lot going on, uh, really metallic like. Uh, we'll just edit with the colors. We'll change the highlight mode to normal on both, like so. Uh, the first color will be uh, mid tone gray, I'll say. And the second color will be a nice light white, like so. And I'll maybe change the angle to 180, like so. Alternate it just a in fact, nah. 85. There we go, that's looking good. I'll uh, maybe lighten this up a little bit and add a darker shade here. Really get some more contrast in there. Maybe lower the color overlay just a tad, like so. And there we have it. Now we've got a really nice effect going on there. However, we really want to get the text in, so to do this, uh, make a new layer, uh, text. Uh, if I go over here, uh, you see how the text looks like it's inside the sphere, and it makes it look like it's indented into the blue. Uh, 
uh, SAS Effect will be working on. I'm going to type in CD. Uh, if you don't know what CD is, then you shouldn't be here. Nah, I'm only really joking. CD obviously standing for Chrome Designs, my channel. Uh, I'm using the font Slant. Uh, it gives a nice effect, I feel, for this. Uh, that it's kind of been uh, manually edited, despite that it hasn't. Uh, so just rotate it, make it bigger. Bit too much, there we go. A nice effect. And you see that it's overlapping uh, on that, so you don't, you, <laughs> that's not something that you want. You want it to kind of be integrated under the inner bevel. Uh, so to do this, we'll first of all rasterize the text layer by right clicking rasterize type. And then on the outer, in fact, no, on the inner sphere, this one here, the blue one, uh, we'll command click on the thumbnail, and this will select everything inside of that. However, you want the opposite, we want to select everything outside of this, so we'll go command or control shift I. Uh, which is inverted the selection uh, onto the CD layer and we'll simply press the uh, backspace on our keyboard and there we have it uh, so that's looking good the text looks like it's integrated oh, it looks a bit flat a bit 2d so add a bit of depth uh, we'll zoom in just a tad uh, we'll get the nice indents effect uh, on the text uh, so to do this first of all you want the text to be uh, a, a really dark charcoal gray uh, just before black uh, maybe a mistake I made in rasterizing it beforehand. However, not to bother, we'll just go to uh, hue and saturation. Um, we'll make sure we press this black and white arrow, which means it kind of creates a clipping mask and goes to the layer below, which is the text layer. And we'll just lower the lightness, increase it just a tad, something like that. There we go. Obviously, this can be changed as. Uh, it's, an, it's, it's an adjustment layer, so it doesn't go straight on and means you can't edit it later. Uh, it will always be there. Uh, so now actually editing the text. Uh, basically, it's going to be adding an inner shadow. Uh, so just go to inner glow, uh, change it, uh, uh, blend mode to normal rather, and the color to black. Maybe just increase the size a little bit. And there we go. We want some ridges around on the outside. So to do this, go to drop shadow. Um, we use the opacity of about 40. Uh, blend mode to overlay, uh, change the color to white, uh, change the size to zero, uh, the spread to 100, and the distance to about two. Two or one or three, you know, whatever floats your boat. I quite like two, however, it really does depend on your canvas size. If you want it to be noticed, um, two maybe not quite be noticed enough, so I'll actually put a three. There we go. Maybe add an inner shadow to create a little bit more depth uh, towards the layers, like so. Uh, you want it to be enough that it's noticeable. However, you don't want it to be so much that it looks like it's just a gradient. Uh, you want it to not. You want the person that's viewing it to actually know that it's indented. Uh, so that's looking good. Uh, the text looks okay. However, you want to get some more depth between uh, the outer ring, the gloss, and the blue. Uh, so let's go into. Uh, uh, the blue layer, the top one, and go inner glow, uh, change the blend mode to normal, and um, black. Increase the size as you wish, like so. And there we go. So now we've literally got most things uh, sorted. However, we need some reflections going on to make it get that extra edge of kind of glossiness. Uh, so to do this, uh, we'll make a new layer. And we go to uh, the ellipse tool again. We'll change the color to white, and we'll simply draw one out at the top here. That's nice looking good. Place it to the top. Now add a layer mask by clicking to this button down here, and go to gradient. Uh, make sure it's on black to white and linear, and drag up like so. And you see that it's created some nice. A uh, fair bit of gloss, so if it's a bit too harsh, so we'll lower the opacity to about something like 70. Now we're going to do this again, but we're going to make it yeah, a little bit less, uh, a little less strong, so it's going to be more of a slight reflection. So we'll draw out another sphere, or ellipse rather, and we'll place it in the same place again, and maybe make it just a little bit bigger. And we'll drag that under the previous layer like so and again we're going to add the layer mask and the gradient uh, make sure bear in mind the gradient's got to be on black to white like so 
and drag up, hold shift to get it straight, and there we go. And then lower this pasty a little bit more, something about 50. And there you have it. Uh, one final one, uh, final little bit of gloss. Uh, I'll make a sphere like so, going down. Uh, more of an ellipse, I suppose, using the ellipse tool. I'll uh, make it more of an egg shaped. Uh, position it at the top to the bottom. Uh, add the layer mask and go to the green overlay and literally do exactly the same. Hold shift to get it straight. And there you have it. Drag it below. Obviously, lower the opacity because that's rather strong. Uh, something like that. That's looking rather nice. Um, one other thing I like to add another bit adds a little bit more reflection to it. Make a new layer just above uh, the 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 uh, different shapes, the ellipses, uh, but before the text layer, like so. Uh, we'll go to the brush tool, and I'm using the font brush, not a font, the size, uh, 600. Uh, this suits the canvas size that I'm using. Obviously, if you're using smaller, the brush will be smaller. If you're using bigger, the brush will need to be bigger. So make sure the colors on white for starters, and we'll click, uh, position it in the middle, and go a little bit up, as if it's facing upwards, and then lower the opacity just a little bit more like so and that's looking really nice um, you're really getting a nice glossy orb going on there go actual pixels uh, one thing I'm not too fond of is maybe the colors on the sphere it doesn't look as kind of pure so this color hmm, just trying to find a good color here that's quite a nice color something like that okay that'll do I'll do a donkey. <laughs> anyway, uh, yep, so I think that's pretty much it. Obviously, everything you can change. Uh, for example, the beveling and boss, you know, change it uh, to whatever floats your boat, really. Like so. Drag it around. Get a nice effect that you wish. Uh, maybe add a contour if you want that. That again spices things up. Uh, anything to kind of get that unnatural kind of reflection uh, towards the surrounding or whatever. Um, but anyway, that's all for me guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been Conor Chrome Designs, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.